When Ajahn Sawat was here leading these meditation sessions, he'd often say, start out with an attitude of respect. Respect for the concentration, respect for your object. Remember that what you're doing here is a very high level of activity, in the sense that it raises your mind from its ordinary grubbing around, looking for pleasures with the fantasies of lust, fantasies of anger, fantasies of whatever, and finding pleasure on the level of form, just the body as you sense it from within, raises the mind. Because this is a pleasure that doesn't harm anybody. It doesn't harm you, it doesn't harm the people around you. And it's a pleasure that makes the mind clear, which is unlike a lot of the pleasures of the world that tend to cloud the mind. So approach this with an attitude of respect. And that respect as you go through the day. For the fact that the breath is here, you can be focused on the breath at any time at all. And also have respect for other people's concentration. That chant we had just now about respect for concentration means two things. Respecting your own center that you work hard to create, and then all too often just throw away. It's like it's something that's sitting in your lap while you're sitting and meditating. As soon as you get up, it falls off your lap and it's gone. So instead, think of it as a bowl of oil you have inside. You've got to keep balanced. Remember that image in the canon where the Buddha said it's like having a bowl of oil on your head, and there's a man with a sword following behind you, with a sword upraised, ready to cut off your head as soon as that single drop falls. And on one side there's a beauty queen singing and dancing, on the other side there's a crowd getting excited about the beauty queen, and you've got to walk between the two. It sounds kind of scary. But you should have that kind of respect for your concentration. And as I said, for the concentration of the people around you. There's that old saying that silence is golden. And so if you're going to break silence, you have to have something better than gold. When I was in Thailand with a John Fuhrman, there were two things he said to me very early on. One was that you're a Westerner, your opinions are not wanted here. which was like a bunch of cold water in my face. But then I found it very liberating. I didn't have to have opinions. I could stay with my concentration, stay with my center. And if people thought I was dumb, well, that was fine. If people thought I was wise because I was so quiet, well, that was fine, too. The other thing he said was one time he heard me in a conversation with another monk, and I was saying, well, I think it's probably like this, it was some point of dharma. And he says, if you don't know, then why expose your ignorance, and why inflict your ignorance on other people? They went on to say you should have a rule for yourself, that if something is not necessary, you don't say it. That's the question you always ask before you open your mouth. Is this necessary to say? And then went on to say, if you can't control your mouth, there's no way you're going to control your mind. A good lesson. Because after all, when you're getting the mind to settle down, you're engaging in what they call verbal fabrication, direct a thought and evaluation. And if you can't control your verbal fabrication as you go through the day, it's going to be really hard to control it as you sit down to meditate. So keep very careful control over your mouth. Because it is liberating, not having to have opinions, and allowing yourself to be a mysterious person. But this doesn't have to be grim, because that's another one of John Fung's statements, which is that jhana is the sport of wise people. It's something to enjoy, and you can make that your challenge. How can I? keep the mind centered in this kind of situation? How can I keep it centered in that kind of situation? When there's physical pain, when there are a lot of people talking around you and saying stupid things, can you maintain your restraint? And how can you make a game out of it? 
After all, one of the customs of the noble ones is to take delight in developing, i.e. developing skillful qualities, and to take delight in abandoning unskillful qualities. Make that your sport. All too often we get our entertainment in the course of the day by slipping off concentration and indulging in fantasies. And I excuse it by saying, well, the mind needs a little time off, needs some, needs some rest, needs some entertainment. And the fantasies usually involve passion or lust or greed or anger, aversion, ill will, or just plain delusion. You have to ask yourself, haven't you had enough of that? Isn't there a better, better entertainment? How about the entertainment of learning how to breathe in different ways, the entertainment of learning how to conceive the breath in different ways? Explore that connection. How is it that holding a picture in the mind will change the way you breathe? And what pictures are you holding in the mind? There's a great series of questions that Dogen asks about. Are you, is the mind sitting in the body, or is the body sitting in the mind? Where are you in the body right now? Can you think of yourself as someplace else? That wasn't his question, but it's a follow-up question. Can you think of yourself as hovering outside the body? Can you be inside the body, different places? When the breath comes in, can it come in from the back? And how about the breath energy around the body? There's a lot, <clears throat> there are a lot of things you can explore, and you can get your entertainment this way and see it as a challenge. As you're working, how do you keep the mind still? As you're walking up the hill, how do you keep the mind still? As you're walking down the hill, how do you keep it still? As you're drifting off to sleep, can you notice the point where you begin to lose touch with where you are and start entering into a dream world? You're sitting here breathing, and all of a sudden there's going to be a distraction. Can you tell ahead of time when the distraction is coming? Think of these things as challenges. Be, kind of, <clears throat> be the kind of person who enjoys challenges. So that's the only way that you're going to be able to develop skill. You read about people who are really good at a particular sport or a particular instrument, and they learn all the basic steps. But then they use their imagination to figure out how they can be better and what things can be done with that skill that other people haven't thought of. And it may not be the case that you're going to think of anything to do with meditation that nobody else ever thought of, but at least it's going to be new for you. We're not cutting off the faculties of the mind. We're taking all the faculties of the mind and we're bringing them to bear on this issue of how we can find a true happiness, how we can learn to unlearn our old ways of acting and thinking and speaking. The way we do these things in ignorance, how can we bring knowledge to this? And you know what knowledge comes from? It comes from experimenting. So think up some new breath experiments, some new concentration experiments. Instead of focusing in the middle of the body, start out at the periphery and then move in. See what that does. In this way, you become a wise person whose sport is jhana. Not the old person you were whose sport was thinking about different kinds of fantasies and find your entertainment that way. And even though you're engaged in restraint, the fact that you are not asked to have opinions about things means you're more free to play inside. It's like the monk's rules. When I was first ordained, it was, the books seemed awfully big. Lots and lots of rules. But then I began to realize that having the rules gave me independence I never had before. It opened huge areas of time in my life. 
So I think of restraint as the same way. It's not, it's not a prison. It's a protection against the prisons of other people's minds and the old prisons of your mind. It opens huge new areas inside. So learn to see the joy and restraint. Because it offers a lot more joy than your old activities. A joy that's actually worthy of respect.